This is MSJ Chem. In this video, I'll be looking at the properties of ionic compounds. We'll start by looking at electrical conductivity. In the previous video, we saw that ionic compounds have a lattice structure. Here we can see the lattice structure of sodium chloride. The ions in the lattice structure are held in place by strong electrostatic attractions. The electrostatic attractions are between the oppositely charged ions, for example, the positive sodium ion and the negative chloride ion. So ionic compounds do not conduct electricity when solid. They only conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in water. When molten or dissolved, the ions are free to move and conduct electricity. So to summarize, ionic compounds do not conduct electricity when solid because the ions are held in place by strong electrostatic attractions. They do conduct electricity when molten or dissolved because the ions are free to move and conduct electricity. Next we look at the solubility of ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are soluble in polar solvents, such as water. The ions are separated from the lattice structure by the polar water molecules. The ions are then surrounded by water molecules, which is called hydration. In this diagram we can see a positively charged sodium ion being hydrated by these water molecules. The negative dipole on the water molecule is attracted to the positive charge of the sodium ion. Next we look at the effect of ionic charge on melting point. Here we have two ionic compounds, we have sodium chloride and magnesium oxide. The sodium ion has a 1 positive charge and the magnesium ion has a 2 positive charge. The chloride ion has a 1 negative charge and the oxide ion has a 2 negative charge. And if we compare the melting points, Sodium chloride has a melting point of 801 degrees C, while magnesium oxide has a melting point of 2800 degrees C. So the greater the charge on the ion, the stronger the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions and the higher the melting point. This explains why magnesium oxide with the higher charge on the ions has the higher melting point. And finally we we'll look at the effect of ionic radius on melting point. Once again we have two ionic compounds, sodium fluoride and potassium fluoride. The sodium ion has a smaller ionic radius than the potassium ion. This is because the potassium ion has more occupied energy levels. The radius of the fluoride ion is the same in both examples. If we look at the melting point, we can see that potassium fluoride has a lower melting point than sodium fluoride. So the greater the ionic radius of the ion, the weaker the electrostatic attraction between the oppositely charged ions and the lower the melting point. This explains why potassium fluoride with its greater ionic radius for the cation has a lower melting point. So let's end with a summary. Ionic compounds only conduct electricity when molten or dissolved in solution. They are soluble in polar solvents such as water. Ionic compounds have high melting points because of the strong electrostatic attractions between ions. The greater the charge on the ion and the smaller the ionic radius, the higher the melting point. 